Hello everyone, we're taking a break from everything else to check up on Lila Chess Zero. Now we don't cover uh, all that many games that she plays, uh, but uh, those that we do mostly come recommended from you guys. Uh, so this is one of the games that has been recommended by you. It's uh, game 61 from the uh, TCEC Super Final, uh, the Top Chess Engine Competition Super Final uh, Season 15. And it's uh, Stockfish with the white pieces against Lila Chess Zero. Uh, D4 is already on the board, sorry about that, uh, in a very nice uh, line of the Trompovsky. So uh, for those of you who enjoy the Trompovsky, this will be uh, uh, just very nice. And for those of you who don't uh, play it all that often, you'll just see it's really a crazy line, uh, which uh, pretty much uh, disregards uh, developing pieces. But uh, it's best for me just to show you and then see what happens. So in the previous season, in season 14, we've been covering a few games. Uh, Lila really played well. And uh, well, it's always interesting to check uh, how a self-learning uh, neural network uh, will do against, uh, well, standard engines like Stockfish. And here, uh, Lila has been improving uh, uh, by herself and of course Stockfish has been upgraded as uh, as that goes and uh, it's uh, well now uh, both of them are in the super final and they are playing I believe it, it is a 100 game match so uh, it will be very interesting to see who, who, who comes up uh, on top. So without further ado you've recommended it so let's check it out it's uh, really very nice so I do hope you enjoy it. Uh, uh, Stockfish opens with a d4, uh, we have knight to f6, bishop to g5, so the Trompovsky attack, and um, it's uh, the way this match goes. So the uh, first uh, uh, Stockfish plays this line of the Trompovsky with the white pieces, uh, and then, uh, well, it doesn't really matter how the game ends, then Lila gets the white pieces and uh, they have to play the same line. So that way they check out uh, how, how Lila deals with certain openings and how Stockfish deals with certain openings. Uh, we have knight to e4 now, attacking the bishop, bishop to f4, and now c5, just uh, a nice flank attack in the center. With f3, pushing the knight back, queen to a5 with check, uh, we have c3 blocking and now knight back to f6. Uh, we have d5 grabbing more space in the center. Uh, queen b6 now uh, pressuring the bishop to go back as uh, the b2 pawn is under attack and you can't defend it with queen c2 or queen c1 uh, because the queen has to keep an eye on the d5 pawn. So here we have bishop to c1. A very exciting line as bishop goes to f4 then bishop retreats uh, queen went to a5 then the queen retreated to b6 and that's not even even the beginning uh, we have d6 by lila now comes e4 and now e6 and here uh, this position has been reached before but there is only one game in the database where knight to a3 was played and here uh, we have c4 which is a new move in the position and it is uh, of this moment that uh, stockfish played c4 that we have a completely new game never before played uh, uh, so we have g6, Lila prepares to fianchetto the bishop, we have knight to e2, this knight is now coming to c3 as this pawn is already on f3, so this knight is coming to, uh, to c3 and this knight will come to d2 after the, the light square bishop moves to f1 and then depending on what uh, Lila plays to, to e3 or either g3. Uh, so bishop to g7 as planned, uh, knight e to c3 and here we have castles by Lila. We have bishop to e2 and now comes knight to e8. Uh, the white king is in the center so of course Lila wants to bust open the center with f5. Uh, and we have h4 by Stockfish. And now you can see that really uh, both, both Stockfish and Lila are pretty much playing with the pawns, not really uh, doing anything with the pieces. We have h6. Uh, so after h5 comes, you're ready to counter it with the g5. Uh, but here we have g4 by Stockfish. So again, just completely disregarding any pieces development, just launching, uh, you know, forward with the pawns. Uh, and now comes queen back to d8. So very interesting. First Lila played queen b6, sorry, queen a5, uh, then retreated queen to b6, and now queen to d8. And this is something uh, we've seen alpha zero do. Alpha <laughs> will play seven moves with the queen uh, in the opening and then, uh, you know, just retreat with the queen to the, to the starting squares. And uh, it's uh, just everything against the, the principles that you are being taught when, when you start learning chess. You know, don't bring your queen out too early. Uh, Paul Morphy uh, said, you know, uh, help your pieces so they can help you. And here, as you can see, not really uh, a lot of pieces uh, play going on, especially from Lila's perspective. But if you look at Stockfish pieces, uh, also, you know, mo mostly pawn play. Uh, but okay, with bishop to e3, finally we have some uh, development with f5, uh, and now comes f4. Stockfish, uh, again, just, uh, you know, lounging forward, going, uh, putting everything into the attack, uh, with queen to e7, and now comes h5. And here Lila blocks with the g5. Uh, and now what do you do here? First, queen to d2 by Stockfish, putting pressure on this... Uh, 
uh, well, pawn chain in front of the king. Uh, and now, okay, if, you, if you've seen this position, let's say knight c3, queen d2 with this nice battery of bishop on e3, uh, you have the bishop on e2, rook and h1, all the pawns advanced, you might think, uh, yeah, this is probably something, you know, uh, white developed the knight, then the bishop, then the queen, and then, you know, he, he just started pushing the pawns, but that's not the case. First, the pawns went forward, and only then do we have the development of the pieces. And here, uh, you have e5, and now this is a complete madness on the board. I mean, look at this bad boy here. Uh, just a just a massive uh, pawn structure <laughs> uh, on the king side, and what do you, what do you do here? I mean, it's uh, just crazy calculating all the captures. Uh, but uh, point being, if you play something like uh, let's say g captures on f5, yes, you do get a very nice uh, pass pawn on f5. But then again, black also gets a very nice pass pawn, maybe not with the g, but with the e pawn. Uh, here uh, on f4 you have to go back with the bishop uh, and even if you give up the bishop for two pawns let's say something like this you will not uh, I mean it's it's an interesting idea uh, but against uh, such a such a strong opponent like Leela of course uh, Stockfish isn't interested in in doing something like this you would do something maybe if you played against your friend in a in a blitz game but not in a in a serious uh, you know TCEC super final so here we have f captures on g5 uh, we have f4 now and now uh, we must consider uh, a few things. First of all, your bishop is under attack. You could move the bishop back. But also everyone is wondering, but why not g captures on h6? And it's a wonderful line. Uh, really just a just a nice human line that, um, <laughs> well, most of us would go for probably. Uh, which uh, is very exciting. After uh, you capture on e3, the queen is under attack. So first you have to react to this. Queen captures on e3 and now bishop to f6, just uh, grabbing grabbing hold of the g5 square. And now, of course, you want to bust open the g file. You allow black to capture and then you pin the bishop, rook g1. And now it seems like white is winning. How do you prevent rook captures? It's just over. I mean, you, <laughs> you're going to develop your knight, castle, and you just bring the other rook into the game and white is winning. Uh, it would be the case if black didn't have rook to f4. And now you don't have a good, a good follow-up uh, with your attack. If you go something like queen g3, to capture now, now you get bishop to g4, uh, completely unpinning from black. And now the point is, you cannot capture, if you capture uh, bishop captures on g4, uh, then bishop to h4 traps your queen. Uh, so uh, black wins here. Uh, even, even such a nice check like bishop to e6 check, which is a double check, doesn't help you. Black will just move the king and there is no good follow-up. You're, you're still... Uh, you know, th there's no good way to take care of this, so you're just going to lose the queen. Uh, but it is a very nice uh, thing, you know, that we have to consider. Uh, just g captures on h6, but it doesn't work, of course. Stockfish doesn't go for it. We have bishop back to f2, and now just h captures on g5, completely closing this. And now, I don't know, h6 seems like a very nice human move. Uh, you don't want to allow black to close this with, with uh, the bishop. Uh, but Stockfish has a very nice idea. First, we have queen to d3. And now knight to d7. Lila starts developing uh, uh, the other pieces. We have rook to g1, uh, bishop to f6 now, putting more uh, d defense and here not allowing white to bust open anything. Uh, knight to d2, stockfish starts developing as well. And now queen to f7. Uh, we have queenside castle by stockfish and now bishop back to d8. Uh, here Lila makes room for the knight to come to f6, but also this bishop is coming to a5 to control this very important diagonal, which you'll see why it's important later. Uh, knight to f3 by stockfish and now king to h7. Uh, we have rook to g2, preparing to double up on the g file, uh, which uh, you might think, but why double up on the g file? I mean, the g file is, uh, you know, closed solid. Uh, well, or is it? Uh, we have a6, Lila prepares rook to b8, followed by b5, uh, to bust open on the queen side as Stockfish Castle queen side, and now just rook d to g8. And again, if you try something like, uh, well, uh, there are a lot of ways that white can bust open on the queen side, on the king side. You could go bishop to h4, let's say if black played a slow move, b6, now you could try bishop h4. But black, uh, black would never really capture here, I mean. But you would put pressure on the pawn here, black would probably just have to defend it. You, you will not be able to capture because g5 and then all of a sudden it's a very dangerous position for black. But it's just one of the options that you have for, for at least trying to bust open the king side. Uh, here we have rook to g8 first and now comes queen back to c2 uh, we have king to h8 by lila king to b1 by stockfish and now rook to b8 preparing b5 as planned and now king to a1 stockfish 
uh, decides that it's much safer for the king to, to, to be an a1 uh, with knight e to f6 here, bringing the knight uh, into the game, and now knight to d1. Uh, with bishop to a5 as planned, uh, grabbing hold of this very important diagonal, and now comes knight to h4. This was Stockfish's idea. And now, if you play pawn captures, then you get bishop captures, and then when this pawn starts marching forward, it will be very dangerous for Lila to defend this position. So, after knight to h4, Lila just said, uh, okay, just knight to f8. Uh, I'm just gonna defend the g6 square, so if your knight ever comes there, uh, I'm just gonna grab it. So, uh, here we have bishop to f3. Stockfish just blocks this pawn, you don't want to allow f3, any tactics might be available, but also we should check what happens after knight to g6 check. I mean, it's a very nice check, you're at least uh, busting open the h file, but uh, does it bring you anything after queen captures on g6? Uh, sure, you can go rook h2 check, then the king will just go away, rook g to h1, you will completely dominate the h file, uh, but black will just ignore you, play b5, continue the attack on the queen side, and you don't really have a good move here. This knight on f6 uh, controls, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of important squares here, and you don't really have a good follow up on your on your sacrifice. So here, Stockfish just keeps everything intact with bishop f3. Now comes b5. Lila starts uh, the attack on the queen side. Knight to c3, and now with queen to e8, trying to bring the queen into the attack as well. Uh, knight to b1, and now comes rook to b7. Uh, with knight to f5 by Stockfish, and this is now basically a monster knight, so you do have to eliminate it. Uh, you're not gonna just leave it there. Uh, there is an exception to this rule. Sometimes a monster knight will just be given away. For example, if you've been on this channel following it uh, ever since we've been covering the Bobby Fischer saga, then you know the famous game between Bobby Fischer and Tigran Petrosian, uh, where Fischer uh, gave up the monster knight for, for Petrosian's bishop, who wasn't really doing anything, and all the grandmasters were like, Wow, and that was a really a nice moment. Uh, if you haven't, I mean, do check it out. It's a very nice game, but it, it is one of the exceptions where uh, you will voluntarily give up a monster knight. Uh, but okay, bishop captures on f5. We have g captures on f5, and now we have knight 8 to h7. Just, you know, keeping everything uh, in check on the king side. And now Lila hopes to transfer the game on the queen side. With h6, finally, this pawn is uh, pushed forward. And now bishop to b4. Uh, here we have queen to e2, uh, and now comes b captures on c4. And here just bishop to, you don't want to capture here. If you capture here, then uh, queen to b5 will be very strong, just bringing the queen into the game. Uh, of course, you don't want to trade here, it would just improve black spawn structure. So here, Stockfish has something else in mind. First, bishop to e1, uh, and now queen to d8, just preparing to bring the queen into the game via, uh, via queen to a5. Uh, knight to c3 now, and now you can see that uh, even though the b file is, uh, well, uh, 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 semi open, uh, you don't uh, really uh, have any good options for attack. Let's say if queen b6 and let's say queen c2, you don't really gain anything. Bishop captures, bishop captures, and good luck busting this open. I mean, this b2 pawn is protected like, uh, well, a, a, like a very important pawn. Uh, so, after knight to c3, we have rook to b8 by Lila, and now king back to b1. We have bishop to a3, threatening to capture here, and now just knight to a4. Stockfish nicely defends everything. Uh, we have c3 by Lila, giving up a pawn here. Bishop captures on c3, and now queen to d7, attacking the knight on a4. Queen to d1 defending, we have bishop to b4, uh, offering a trade here, and now just king to a1. Uh, we have queen to b7 now, with some uh, very nice pressure along the b-file, uh, but the v2 pawn is so nicely protected that you don't really have, have any ways of busting this uh, queen side. Uh, we have queen to c2 by Stockfish, now comes a5. Uh, queen to e2, and now queen to d7. Again, pressuring the knight here, just queen d1 repeating, and now Lila doesn't repeat, but rather c4. So little by little, uh, Lila is making progress. We have a3, pushing the bishop back, uh, but now comes queen to b5, and it is a very nice idea. Of course, if you capture the bishop, uh, then a captures on b4 will just be too strong. I mean, the king is still on a1 after you move the bishop, then rook to a8 will be winning, uh, as uh, you, you don't really have a good way of defending the knight here, and black's attack will be very strong. So, after queen b5, we have queen back to c2. Stockfish just uh, waits and see what, what happens here, uh, and now queen back to e8. Uh, we have bishop to e2, and now queen to d7. So, 
uh, from something that, uh, you know, seemed like a very uh, aggressive uh, start to the game, uh, we basically enter a very slow maneuvering game. And now, what do you do here? If you capture on c4, then bishop captures on c3 is the idea. After knight captures on c3, uh, then g4, and then uh, Lila just gets a very powerful attack, even on the king side. So, after this queen to d7, we have bishop f3, Stockfish just blocks here, and now queen back to b5, with bishop back to d1, and now bishop captures on c3. Knight captures on c3, attacks the queen on b5, we have queen to c5, uh, queen to d2, and now finally queen to d4. Lila now offers a trade of queens, which would uh, improve her pawn structure immensely here in the center. Uh, queen to e1, uh, not allowing this trade, and now queen back to b6, just assuming this very, uh, very important uh, file. Uh, queen back to d2, and now comes rook to b7, preparing the other rook to come to b8. Uh, with a4, now this is a very strong setup uh, for Stockfish here, not, uh, not very easy to, uh, to, to destroy it. We have queen back to c5, and now just queen to e1. And here we have rook to b4. Uh, if the knight moves now, the a4 pawn will be, uh, will be vulnerable, maybe even giving up an exchange is a possibility. Uh, queen back to d2 by Stockfish, and now queen back to b6. We have queen to c1, and now queen to d4 once again. Queen to c2, and now rook to b3 even. Uh, and here, uh, again, you have to be careful. If you play something like queen f2 to offer a queen trade, uh, then rook captures on c3 will be very strong. And now you can no longer trade queens uh, due to rook c1 check. Uh, first you uh, hide the rook, and then you recapture the queen. And now, of course, if you count the pieces, black is just up a piece, and of course, completely winning. Uh, so, after rook to b3, we have bishop to e2, and now comes rook captures on c3. This was Lila's plan all along. Uh, queen captures on c3, queen captures on c3, b captures on c3, and now, of course, what's the idea behind the ID exchange sacrifice? Knight captures on e4, just eliminating uh, the base of the pawn chain, uh, now making the d5 and the f5 pawn weak pawns, and then uh, Lila plans to make this massive pawn center uh, just start marching forward. Uh, with bishop to f3, if king to b2, if you try and defend the c3 pawn, uh, Lila isn't really interested in the c3 pawn. Uh, Lila would just go knight to f6 uh, and then start pushing the pawns, would be very dangerous for white. Uh, so we have bishop to f3, and now Lila just goes back with the knight. Knight to f6, and now the idea is the same. Uh, g4, of course, and then start pushing the pawns. Uh, bishop back to... <coughs> Uh, to e2, and now e4, now preparing f3 this way. Uh, we have bishop captures on c4, but now g4, and now you can see the three connected pass pawns uh, are more than enough compensation for the exchange sacrifice. Uh, we have rook to b2, Stockfish tries to find uh, activity on the queen side, but now knight to g5. Uh, we have rook to b6, going after the d6 pawn, but Lila just defends it, knight to f7. Uh, we have bishop back to f1, and now comes f3. Uh, we have c4 by white, and now comes knight to d7. Attacking the rook, we have rook to b7, and now the other knight uh, takes this knight's place, uh, defending it, and now this knight also blocks uh, the rook's attempt at attacking the, the the e6 pawn. So white, for the moment, is unable to create a pass pawn of its own. Uh, we have f6 by white, okay. Uh, white does have a pass pawn, but it's very unlikely that it's actually <laughs> that these two are actually going somewhere. Uh, we have e3, now e2 is the idea, and you really don't have a good way of preventing this. Uh, we have rook to b3, but now just e2, now you do have to give up the piece, we have bishop captures, f captures, and now rook to e3, going after the pawn here, but now of course you all see the move, knight to f3, attacking the rook, uh, also if you block the pawn, then just knight captures it, and if you don't do it, then uh, the pawn will come to e1, uh, a square which is protected by the knight. So here, uh, Stockfish tried f7, but Lila just blocks, rook to f8, we have rook captures on g4, uh, and now of course just e1, bringing a queen into the game, rook captures, knight captures, uh, and here uh, Stockfish played rook to g6, but it was in this position, uh, as engines usually do, that they both agree that uh, white was uh, black was simply winning by too much, uh, and it was basically in this position that Stockfish resigned the game. Something we, uh, you know, uh, before we weren't really used to hearing something like this, Stockfish resigned the game, but ever since the appearance of Alpha Zero, uh, this has been, you know, something of a, of a common, common thing. 
So yeah, a uh, very nice uh, game with the black pieces by Lila Chess Zero in the in the Trompovsky line. Uh, if you enjoyed this game, as uh, so many of you have uh, recommended it, uh, we could also show this exact same line where Lila plays it with the white pieces. Uh, if you're interested to see how, how that would turn out. So yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Tim Seltzer and Michael Carr for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Uh, continuing the coverage of the FIDE Grand Prix, continuing the coverage of the Capablanca saga, checking up on Lila, and of course, uh, as this game came, uh, came by, uh, checking up on your suggestions, I will also be checking up on your suggestions. So yeah, uh, that's the game, uh, and yeah. Thank you all. I will see you soon. Have an excellent rest of your day.